Hey there, Leslie here, and today I'm going to talk to you about how we can naturally raise our immune system without raising it too much. So why am I making the distinction? We all know there is a terrible respiratory virus uh, out there, and we're all looking for ways to boost our immune system. But it turns out the immune system actually has some subtleties. And those of us like myself who have been autoimmune patients know that sometimes the immune system goes a bit haywire and begins to not just attack the offending um, virus or pathogen in our body, but it actually begins to attack our own tissues uh, like our joints in the case of rheumatoid arthritis or our organs in the case of lupus. So um, with this particular respiratory syndrome virus, uh, similar to SARS and MERS, what happens is that um, the immune system attacks the alveoli in the lungs and they then fill with fluid and one is deprived of oxygen, like a really bad scenario. So um, reading through this paper, I was interested in looking things that would make sure that the T helper cells that are there to make sure our immune system gives a proper response, not a whack-a-mole, you know, overdone response that destroys everything. Actually, maybe whack-a-mole is okay. Nuclear Armageddon, not okay, right? Um, some of the supplements that seem to help um, are ones that you may already use, but we do associate with suppressing viruses and colds, and one of them is zinc. And zinc deficiency turns out to be associated or correlated with a, uh, a dysregulated immune response. So you get nuclear Armageddon type responses if you don't have enough zinc. So zinc is a good one. Another one that seems to calm down this DEFCON 1 response is vitamin D3. And you don't need to super high dose it. Um, but if you're a person of color like I am and you live in a northern clime where you're not getting a ton of sunlight and therefore not synthesizing vitamin D in your skin, um, in winter you want to take a bit more. And of course you can get it from food sources. I tend to get mine from grass-fed ghee. Um, you get it from grass-fed butter as well. And if you're going to take vitamin D3, always take it with K2. Otherwise, it might lay down in your arteries. You don't want that. You don't want to make your arteries smaller. You want this to lay down in your bones. So those are two supplements, which you might already have in your cupboard. But I was really fascinated to see that the paper also talks about something called betulinic acid. And this is found in... Um, uh, in mushrooms. And there are two in particular that have really good antiviral activity, while at the same time, they seem to, um, they seem to basically damp down or soothe the overreactive immune response. So one of these is chaga, and the other one is cordyceps. And cordyceps, they're both antivirals, but cordyceps in particular is the one that seems to attenuate or reduce um, the cytokine response. I've talked about cytokines in other, uh, in a few other videos, some of the microbiome videos, but basically when you have a cytokine storm, um, that's when tissue gets damaged. And that is, um, you know, that is, is something that is happening with this virus. So, I hope that that helps. And again, I'll put the name of the paper up again. If you'd like to take a look at it, you can always Google it. But I found that really interesting and I hope you found it helpful too. Stay safe, everyone. And if you've got any comments or questions, please leave them in the messages below. I read every single one. Thanks so much for stopping by.